Hashem says that at the end of days, He's going to punish the wicked and reward the righteous with the same tool on this earth. It's called the sun. In Tehilim, Psalm 19, verse 5, David Melech tells us that Hashem is going to burn the wicked with the sun, while the righteous are going to be revived, meaning they're going to feel a healing power with this very same sun. And David Melech tells us exactly how it's going to happen. Hashem is going to take the sun out of its shell. Now, the last time you looked at the sun, which most people can't look at the sun for, for very long. But last time you looked at the sun, did you see a shell? I didn't see a shell. So what is David Melech talking about? According to our knowledge, that's not scientific, this is what the sun looks like. Just a big ball of fire. But David Melech says, no, this big ball of fire, that's the shell. The real sun is inside. Scientists, in just the past generation, Dr. Vidal, a senior astronomer at Greenwich Observer Observatory in England, a professor of astronomy at Australia's National University. They started taking pictures, x-ray pictures of the sun and discovered something very, very interesting. The sun really does have a shell. The real sun actually looks more like this. Where the real sun is a small ball inside, which obviously in comparison to us, it's huge. But the outside is a shell. Now why did Hashem create this sun this way? Because the sun that's inside generates, uh, or has a temperature that's generated of 15 million degrees Celsius. But the temperature that we get from, to our earth, and the temperature that we get from the outer part, is only 6,000 degrees. A little bit of a difference. Meaning that if this shell did not exist, neither would we. The sun generates every day with the 6,000 degrees that we get is more power than all the power that mankind has ever produced. And it does it every minute. Every minute that the sun exists, it creates more power than we ever had, that we've ever generated as a mankind. But that's with 6,000 degrees. If we really had the real sun, obviously it would be drastically bigger. But scientists also confirmed that the sun is precisely positioned in the only place that would allow us to live. Because if the sun was one degree closer to us, the earth would burn immediately. If it was one degree further, we'd all freeze. Same goes with oxygen. Oxygen on Earth is 21 degrees. The 21 uh, degrees of oxygen you have to have. If we have 22, Earth becomes explosive. The next guy that smokes a cigarette destroys the world, becomes an atomic bomb. Everything is destroyed. Just for one degree more oxygen. If we have 20 degrees of, uh, uh, of oxygen, we won't be able to live, won't be able to breathe, and the world is destroyed instantly. This is shown, showing to you that obviously all of this is very, very precise. This cannot happen as a mikre, meaning as a happenstance or coincidence. Another thing that the Torah says in Parashat Bereshit, Genesis, we talk about creation. Hashem says that he split the water from above the heavens to, uh, from the water from below the heavens. Now the water below the heavens, you know, if the heavens is the sky, below, water below the heavens, we see it, we know it, it's the ocean. 72% of the world is, is water. So okay, so we see that there's water. But Chazal says, no, no, no. The water here is not the real water. The water here is very, very little. 
the real water that allows earth, allows mankind to exist is the water from above the heavens. So until recently, we didn't discover any water anywhere. Mars doesn't have water. Pluto doesn't have any water. The uh, moon doesn't have anything. Doesn't even have the flag that they say they have. So where is this water? Especially if it's so much more water than us. And then we, these smart scientists, Dr. Sigward and Dr. Louis Frank, started looking into the stars and they started looking into something that we call, you know, different meteors. These different things that fly around and sometimes hit Earth. And then they see something that everyone has seen at some point in their life if they live in a city outside of New York because there's too much pollution in the sky. You see a shooting star once in a while. Usually most fishermen enjoy this. You see a shooting star is a star that just makes a little streak. And everyone likes this. They go, oh, a star is falling. It's not really a star that's falling. What it actually is, according to scientists, according to evidence that we have today, it's a comet. A comet is one giant ball of ice. And the streak is being made because it's going in a direct line to uh, across the sun. So it's melting much faster than it would melt normally. So that streak is actually water. A huge amount of water. And that water arrives here. Every single day, millions and millions of comets go through the atmosphere and they melt by the time they come to Earth. And that's the actual water that revives us and that allows us to survive. So they said, okay, fine, you proved that there's water above the heavens, but where did you prove that there's more there than here? So these telescopes finally came through, finally caught up to us and say, oh, actually the outer shell of the entire universe, so if you have a universe, this is everything. The entire shell is ice. And these comets, these comets that we get are small little chips that break off of it. Chazal knew this again, many, many years ago. One of the most interesting things that I find in this book is something that applies to our life. Most people talk freely, curse freely, speak freely, and think it doesn't really make any, there's no, there's no consequence for this. A famous Japanese doctor, scientist, Dr. Emoto, wanted to see if there's any impact by our words. So he took Petri dishes, you know, these little plastic dishes you find in a science lab, and he put some water into it and he took a few of them and then on one of them he cursed the other one he said nice things I don't think he knew any brachot in Hebrew or anything but he said nice things and then he froze them after freezing them and he looked at the icicles under the microscope now the one that he froze that he said nice things came out looking very beautiful, similar to a, uh, a snowflake. You guys ever see a picture of a snowflake, what it looks like under a mic microscope? It's beautiful. That by itself is the best proof that there's an intelligent designer behind everything because every single icicle, every single snowflake looks different than another. There's, you're never gonna find two of the same snowflakes. And they're all very precise, like literally like an artist drew them. And he says when you freeze the water, the water, you know, the icicles look something similar when you say something nice but when you actually say something nasty it comes out a little different it looks very black and it looks more like death and he has pictures in his book one end beautiful curse looks like it's mud 
Both of them are water. So a Jewish scientist, student at Bar Ilan University, by name of Tor Tomer Rabiav, wanted to take this to the next level. He wasn't exactly religious, but he said, listen, I always heard this Torah stuff. Let's see if it has any impact. So he took this science experiment to the next level and he planted three beans. Three beans. One of them he said nice things. Another one he said nasty things. And the third one, he said Tehilim. He says, I want to see if they grow differently. So the one that he said nice things grew normally. Grew a little bit, became a little bit of a uh, plant. The one that he cursed at died. Didn't grow anything. The seed died. The one that he said Tehilim grew somewhere in the neighborhood of five times the size of the one that he said nice things to. Main reason for all of this is because your body is made up mostly of water. Technically, if you look at your body and actually what makes up your body as far as the chemicals, you can buy the chemicals in the lab somewhere in the neighborhood of like three to five dollars. Most of your body is water. Now, if the words that you're saying are impacting the outside world in such a negative or positive way, what are they doing to your body? You're mostly water. You're a little bit of a bigger petri dish. If we say brachot, the water is nice and beautiful like a snowflake. If we say klalot, we say nonsense. We talk about Oprah Winfrey in the last show that she had. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how much this is going to help. I don't know how much this is going to help the petri dish you have inside you.